Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. And today I want to talk about why can't I move? It's a very ooh, weepy subject, very deep. Uh, but um, of course it needs like 15 videos, but we'll try in this one. And if I need to revisit again, I will. You know, whenever I ask people uh, that question of why can't I move? Number one, it's um, the number one answer. First of all, I think it's, it's being stuck. And I always tell people, Go back to your last instruction, especially if Christ lives in you, but even if he doesn't. You see, we're, we're spirit beings. We're created in the image and likeness of God. And I love that it says that we're created in God's spiritual personality and his moral likeness. So all of us, I mean, we're created in his image. We can't deny that, that that's who we are. And so if you, why can't I move? Number one, what was the last instruction? What was the last thing that God said to you that you're not obeying? That could be a reason why you're not moving. The other thing is sometimes we are... We listen to the voice of the enemy more than we listen to the voice of God or the voice of hope or the voice of faith, you know? You just say, ah, I mean, things will never change. I'm always going to be like this. It's always been like this. Nobody in my family has ever changed. But if you look around you, people change. People change. People, God does amazing things for people. And even people who don't know God have an, an enormous resolve, a place where they draw energy from and just change. And you decide you're going to change. I remember once, I think I was at a ladies' meeting, and this lady came, this leader, and she was married to quite a, a senior guy. And she said um, that in her family... There were four generations of single mothers. And so she decided, which is amazing, you see, why can't I move? Decisions. Make a decision and you will move. So she decided that she was not going to continue in that trend. And you know something, that, something like that is hard because it's been passed on from generations. But I also see, that's why I see, if other people can get over something, so can you. So she said she's not going to. So you see, I think she examined when I think now, maybe she examined what makes them, of course, having sex before marriage is one of the, probably one of the contributing factors for her being, for all these single women in her, in her lineage. So I think she decided she's not going to do that, you know, just out of resolve. No Christianity, no Christianity, no religion. I'm just not going to do this because I want to break this mold in my family and therefore you must be able to study patterns I'm always asking people to study patterns look at patterns look look at what is um, beguiling your family for lack of a better word or your generation actually what happens in your generation how come all the women on my dad's side don't get married or the women on my mom's side don't get married or how come nobody is able to stay uh, married and there's so much divorce or break or family breakups what's going on you know it's possible to break things you know so first examine them identify them what is this thing that's making you not move and then I've been talking about um, confront yourself interrogate yourself you know like I have a battle with my weight so I'm constantly having this battle with my weight but I don't stop talking about it and I'm not going to get to a place where I'm stuck and say I'm not moving any longer any kind of change I make no matter how small is getting me closer to my goal so that's a place of that's why you have to that's how you answer that question of why can't I move? Also investigate spiritually. I think for me, I don't even know how I got into that conversation of generations, understanding that there was an impact of things that my ancestors have done on my generations. And I asked God, how do I change it? So I, I've been in many years of praying and fasting and crying before God and trying to understand some things God will tell me. I just keep quiet about it. And I'll see this. I remember once going to ask my dad about a certain name I keep seeing appearing when I was praying. And so I went, he, he explained to me uh, what that was all about. And I, I prayed about it and I prayed until I got a release. I felt a breakthrough. So why can't I move? Um, have a, maybe you're, you have an instruction that you haven't followed. Uh, you need to look at your family patterns and they are possible to, you can break them. It is possible to break generational demonic strongholds or patterns. Uh, why can't I move? Am I, uh, have I got too much fear? And you know, I love songs. So I love this song. Um, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. So do you need to speak to yourself? Why can't I move? Are you concerned about what other people are going to say, other people are going to think, you've got to stop, you've got to get out of that mold. Um, are you concerned? A lot of us cannot move because we fear to fail. You have to fail. You know, for me, my best example of failure, I don't know why it always comes up, but it's Abraham Lincoln. And you know, he failed publicly. Some of us are even allowed the privacy to, to fail before, before a, a smaller audience. This man was failing at a national level, but he kept going until he made it um, uh, to, the, to the presidency. So you've got to keep going. You cannot stop. I think of people like Churchill, people like um, this guy who stopped um, a slave trade. I can't remember his name. Um, William Wilberforce, but just people who have tried, you know, even in our own country, you know, 
people who have really tried, got against the mold and said, you know, this is the way I'm going. So I really believe that um, if you're stuck, investigate where you're stuck, investigate why you're stuck, ask God in prayer why I'm stuck, what steps, you know, um, there's a lot that's been t coming to my spirit about actionable steps, you know, that obedience now is about taking steps. So what steps do I need to take, you know? And don't start with many, start with one step. What's the one step I need to take in this season? You know, even divide the year into quarters and say, what's the one step I need to, to make in this season to, to start moving? And to start feeling like there's this unstucking that's going on. It's amazing. Sometimes I see in my, in my, I see in like a visual of a ball and chain. So you've got to get rid of that ball and chain, you know. You've got to decide that it's going to be different. And again, decisions. Decisions are so powerful. Once we decide something, then we keep moving. Maybe you're stuck on your past. Maybe you're stuck on your past fears, your past failures. Maybe you're stuck on this will never happen for me. If you keep thinking like that, then you're not going to move. You've got to paint a picture. Um paint a picture, pray in that picture, you know, cry about that picture and say, Lord, this has got to happen for me. Find scriptures. I always tell people there's nothing that you can't find on Google. I love Google is your friend. So if you say, if it's healing you need, it will be there. Scriptures of brokenness. I mean, you can, you can go into the internet and find things and resources that will help you, but you cannot not move. There's no more stagnation. Um, why can't I move? Also, maybe you're not in the will of God. Sometimes we want things to to happen our way, you know, and God has a different way that things are going to happen. And also patience, I think. That's one thing I've learned, just to be patient in the process. You know, as a mother of many and a mentor to many, I never want my children to go through all everything I've been through. I'm like, no, Lord, they can't go through this. I'll go through it, but they can't, you know. So I'm, I'm praying and trying to hurry the process for them. And sometimes God says, no, relax, you know. They have to go through this process. And um, But as a good parent, you're like, no, you know, hurry up this process for them. So those are the things that I think I right now come up with. Why can't I move? I pray that I've helped you and um, identify how you can move. And also look for a mentor, a coach, a trainer, something. There must be a way out of your situation. And just take uh, small steps every day, actionable steps, and keep moving forward towards the goal. And I guess set a goal. Where are you moving to? Where are we going? Decide and then move forward. My name is Angie Morenga and you're watching... Just Angie.